Swift Demangling Layer iOS. Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to demangle Swift identifier names for iOS reverse engineering. Now the Swift compiler takes variable method and class names and then encodes them inside of the final application. It does this by taking the original names as well as the types of any associated parameters or return values and then jumbling all of these together to produce this kind of mangled name in the final application. Now this ensures uniqueness in inside of that final app, but it also produces a really challenging identifier name for us if we're trying to reverse engineer this application. So I'm going to show you three ways today to demangle these identifier names. The first is going to be by hand. The second is going to use Swift installed on the system. And then in the third method, I'm going to show you how to automate this process in Ghidra so you can speed up your reverse engineering. So let's get right into it and see what this looks like. Now I'm going to open up my application and you can feel free to follow along since this IPA file is available inside of my iOS reverse engineering repository. So we're going to be looking at the control flow flattening IPA file today. Now remember the IPA file is the main application bundle for iOS applications. Now I already have the Maco binary extracted from this and thrown inside of Ghidra. And if you're not sure how to do that, feel free to look at my previous video on binding the entry point of iOS applications. So let's open up our Ghidra instance. Now this is going to be the main entry point of the application when we throw this into Ghidra. And let's take a look at some of the exported symbols that are part of this application binary. I'm going to go over to the exports and let's see what we have. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see. Now, taking a look at this application, this is a pretty small app, but if you look at these identifier names, they all look a little bit funky. You might notice that they kind of have some English words inside of them, but they're separated by random looking numbers and letters all in between these. Now, what all of these different functions and identifier names actually mean are remember those encoded types that are associated with their respective identifier. So let's take a look at one example first and see how we can manually decode this by hand. So let's pick on this one and let's take a look at how we can decode this. You see, this is going to be the full function name that is describing this particular function. So let me just copy this over and I'll throw it into Notepad++ so we can look at every single letter and number separately and kind of separate this into different parts. Let me put this in Notepad++ and let's take a look at the first section. Now this underscore dollar sign S is defining that this is a Swift mangled name and there's a few different unique identifiers that do define Swift names. And then if we take a look at this number 21, this is going to be defining the next letters that are part of the next string name. So if I select all of this, you can kind of tell that this is just a few words pushed together that were probably the original class name, but this is actually a total of 21 characters that I have selected. Now taking a look at the next four, this is defining the next number of characters that are going to be part of this next symbol name. We can see one, two, three, four. This is defining the word with, and then this weird a, B is actually kind of an interesting thing that the Swift compiler does since this method name shares some of the same words that the actual class name, which is going to be this control flow flattening string over here has. So this is going to be substituting part of this inside of the final method name. Now, if we take a look at this number nine, this is defining the last number of characters that are going to be part of this method name. And if we select this, Sure enough, you can see this is a total of nine characters. Now, if we move on to the last sections, these are going to be defining the type of symbol as well as any parameters or return value. This Y signifies that this takes no parameters, so this is void parameters. And then the second Y is referring to the return value, and this is also returning void. And now if we take a look at the last letter, F is signifying that this is defining a function as the symbol. So what we could do is we could decode manually all of these different names for every single one of our exports defined down here. But this is going to be really error prone and 
very challenging and take you a lot of time. So there is an easier methodology that I would highly recommend overdoing this manually. Now what you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that you have Swift installed on your system. You can simply go to the Swift downloads page and then install for your respective operating system. Or if you have Xcode installed on your Mac, you should have this already installed by default. And we're going to use the Swift demangler command that is going to be provided to us inside of the console. So I'm going to close this out and let's open up my command prompt. And let's mess around and try to programmatically demangle this name instead of doing this by hand. So let me take my actual method name. Let's make sure we copy this whole thing. So I'm going to do copy. And now the command on Windows is going to be swift dash demangle. And then you can paste in the entire identifier name that is mangled. Remember defined by this dollar sign S. So let's do enter and see what our Swift command does for that. Now, what this is saying is that this mangled name corresponds to this demangled name. So let's walk through every single part of this demangled identifier name. Now, first of all, the first portion of this demangles to the class name. So the class name that stores this method is gonna be control flow flattening. And then the method name is called with control flow flattened. So remember this weird AB was signifying that this control flow string was also found inside of the class name. So that's just kind of one shortener that the Swift compiler tries to optimize with. And then remember the Y's stood for void, so that means we're taking no parameters, and then we're returning void as our return value. So that's what all of this decodes to, and it looks much prettier if we actually go through and demangle this. Now what we can do, let me just pull this down and make this a little bit smaller. There we go. What we could do is we could take this and copy this, and then go back to our Ghidra instance, and then type L so we can rename this method and then paste in that demangled version that Swift gave to us. And it is going to look a lot prettier, but if you look on the left-hand side, you see how many mangled names we really have to work with. So this is really not a good way of doing it since it's just gonna take you quite a long time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo our variable name and reset this to the mangled version of it. Let's take a look at another method. Let's go to this app body cure VG method name and let's talk about this. So let's go through. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here and see what we have. You can see this is going to be probably part of the main body of the application, but it's just got so many mangled symbol names inside of this that we want to go through and make sure we're demangling all of the method as well as the label names. So what we can do is we can automate this process of going through and renaming all of the respective method and identifier names. And we can do this by using a custom Ghidra script. And I have this script available again inside of the iOS reverse engineering reference. So what we can do is we can take a look at this Swift neat name demangler.py and what this is going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to automatically run that swift demangle command in the background whether you're on windows linux or mac it'll just check the operating system return that demangled output from the command line and then replace that to give you a nice pretty method name and then it's going to go through demangle all of the method names first and then find any potential label names that it can locate and automatically rename all of those different identifiers that correspond to actual Swift types. So I already have this script imported into my Ghidra instance, but you can just simply download this and put this into your Ghidra scripts folder or create a new Ghidra script and just paste this code inside. So let's open up our Ghidra instance and let's just run this and see how this works and watch this happen. I'm gonna open up my script window and this is going to be under the Swift tab. And then this is going to be the same script that we were looking at from GitHub that I can just demonstrate in the basic editor. And this is just going to be all the same code. So let's just watch that run and see how this is going to demangle all of the different identifier names inside of our iOS binary. I'm going to move this to the side so we can watch this happening, make it look cool. And I'm going to hit the play button, and then this is just going to run my selected script. 
And if we click on this, you can see it's printing all of the stuff to the console that it is demangling. So I'm going to let this finish. And it looks like it finished pretty quickly. Now, one thing to note is if you're working with a very large iOS application, this can take a significant amount of time, especially when it gets to the label renamer. But just be patient, go get a cup of coffee and come back and your symbols should be renamed properly. Now let's go through to the console output and you see what this is doing is it's taking the original method name and then it's printing out the new name that it successfully found by running Swift on the back end. And then it'll go through, it'll find any potential labels inside of your application and it'll rename all of those as well. So let's go back to our code portion and let's kind of walk through this code now. So we have our original mangled name added as a comment inside of this application, as well as the new full demangled name. And then it's automatically named this method, the new demangled version of this. So it's much easier to read. And if we continue on through this function, you see it's much more readable and it's gone through and it's demangled all of these different labels as well as the actual method names. So it's going to be the name to the class dot then the actual method name. So this is going to be much more readable and much more understandable if you're trying to reverse engineer this application. Now, finally, if we take a look on the left hand side, we see all of our exported symbols are going to be named according to their class method names or their associated identifier. And this is going to be much more human readable and much more understandable. Now, the last thing to note is that this is only going to work on binaries that contain Swift code. If you're working with a purely Objective-C iOS application, then this is not going to be relevant. So there's a couple ways that you can check this. Honestly, if you just take a look at the method names and you see all of these dollar s symbol names defined, then this that's a pretty good indication that this is indeed a Swift binary. Another check that you can do is you can go to the text segment. And if it's referencing all of these different Swift segments, then this does indeed include some Swift code. So that means that you're going to want to go through and demangle any potential Swift types that you find inside of this. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we demangled some Swift identifiers to help us with our iOS reverse engineering process. We also learned why why Swift uses name mangling so it can create unique names inside of the compiled application. First, we did this by hand by taking the actual final method name and then demangling portion by portion to see what everything actually stood for. Then we did this automatically by using Swift installed on the operating system. And finally, we learned how to automate this by using a custom Ghidra script that goes through and renames all of those different identifiers inside of your application. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. I was not expecting those doubles. Naomi is the winner. Not fair. What? Did you lose again? Oh, she's so mean about it too.